to the most high God. Let's give the Lord God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you and bless you on this day. We want to thank you that you are the Alpha and the Omega, Lord God. You are the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Lord God. We want to thank you that you gave us strength in our bodies that we could make it out here again to the gift from God Worship Center. Lord God, and we thank you that you are continuing to be with us as we come and as we go, Lord God. So we are thankful for your service, for your provision, for all that you do, and for giving us this day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise be to the Most High God. All right. Um, if there's anyone that has any opening songs, testimony, any announcements, anything on your hearts, mind, spirits, any Old or New Testament readings, whatever you might have, you might do so at this time. And welcome here to the Gift from God Worship Center. Bless the Lord. I want to thank the Lord of God again for being the head of my life. Bless him. I also want to thank him for all of the saints, all those that are, all those that will be. I want to thank him for all of the ministers and pastors, apostles, bishops, and all of the saints, disciples of Christ, and all of the prophets and prophetess, and all the people that tune into our videos and leaving comments and everything that concerning God and holiness. So I want to thank the Lord again for uh, keeping the spirit of Christ upon the people in this time of trouble. Mm -hmm. As we get ready to go through these crises and end times, tribulation, great tribulations. I want to thank the Holy Lord for continuing to give unto us the Holy Ghost and spirit of grace for leading God and directing us into all truth. I also want to thank the Lord for all the blessings that he has been in store in my life also as well. Um, but again... Our blessings is not all money. Our blessings also is just being thankful that the Lord watches over you and cover you. That's a blessing all by itself. Because it was laid up to all of us for just money, then all the things that happened to us, we had to be going to doctors, paying for stuff left and right because we got the money. We might not have the money, but we might have the blessings. So I want to thank the Lord God for again for that. In Jesus' name, amen. so 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 many things just to give the Lord thanks for and just so many 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 more things that we don't even know about that the Lord is doing for us how he clears the way when we're traveling down the highway Amen. how he or how we can look back and know that he's back there uh -huh. <laughs> that he got our backs right. Amen. Bless the Lord. It's just, I'm just so in awe of the Lord mm -hmm. on this day, especially how, because he keeps revealing to us. And me and my grandbaby, we was just in the car, and I was talking to her because we heard a song on the radio. And I was just thinking about the blood of Jesus. I was thinking about how his blood, like, I was. I asked her if she had a little cut on herself, and she took her blood, and she put it on on a sore on my skin. <laughs> she put it in my skin. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Do you think?" I asked her if she thought that her blood could hear my skin. Mm -hmm. But then I was like, "That's the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus. Jesus has the power to just think, think a thing." Like we saw many times where he, he didn't even have to go to where a person was sick. Right. He was like, your faith has healed that person just because I knew you had faith. Mm -hmm. That person is healed. So when they got back to that place, mm -hmm. they saw that their loved one was like nothing even happened. Yeah, because they came for the agreement and he was the, the two witness in the agreement. Mm -hmm. So they agreed with each other. Amen. And by the time they got back to whatever it was at, the, the person was healed because they agreed together. Amen. 
So I'm, I'm just in awe. I'm just amazed that this is this is the God that we mm -hmm. serve. Who would choose another? Right. Right. <laughs> Who would choose another? Right. And I'm just so thankful for the Lord God for just continuing to keep me and my family, our ministry, and mm -hmm. uh, we're just excited to see what God's going to do next. Right. Amen. Amen. I do have a little song. I try to sing this little song. Our Father, all of heaven rules your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven rules your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Heaven come down. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory, shaking up the earth and sky, revival, we want to see your kingdom here, we want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus, you're the name we're lifting high, your glory, Shaking up the earth, the sky, revival. We want to see your kingdom here. We want to see your kingdom here. Spirit break out. Break out. Chapter 1 and is 
right before Zephaniah. Zephaniah, Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Zephaniah with the PH and right behind Nahum. Just a small book. So I'm going to start reading at verse 2. And um, Habakkuk, I'm going to just say verse 1, just clarifies that Habakkuk was a prophet. But I'm going to just start reading at verse 2. Mm -hmm. So Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Verse 3, why dost thou shew me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Verse 4, therefore the law is slack, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceeded. Verse 5, Behold ye among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelous, marvelously. Mm -hmm. For I will work a work in your days which ye would not believe, though it be told you. Verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Verse 7. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Verse 8. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the, even, than the evening wolves. Excuse me. And, the, and their horsemen shall spread themselves and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hastes to eat. Verse nine, they shall come for all they shall come all for violence. Their faces shall suck up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand. Verse ten, and they shall scuff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Verse eleven, then shall his mind change and he shall pass over it and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Verse, let me do one more. Verse 12. Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, mine holy one? We shall not die. O Lord, thou hast ordained them for judgment, and, O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Amen. Amen. That was Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 2 through 12. What was 4 again? Verse 4. Therefore, the law is slapped, and judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Mm -hmm. What he saying? It reminded me about the the tares in the field, the mm -hmm. tares with the wheat, mm -hmm. that they all grow together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how they passing you by and you righteous, you serving God and they own, the, the Lord owns the kingdom. You're serving God and the wicked surpassing you is what he's saying. Yeah, so it reminded me of, of what we just said, maybe it was last week, mm -hmm. about how the children of Israel, the one who's supposed to know the Lord, they doing more foul things, or Christians or whatever, the followers of Jesus Christ are mm -hmm. doing more foul things than the people in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what if he's saying he's not doing that, he's righteous, and the wicked still surpassing him? What he's saying to God, if 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 I'm righteous before you, 
how is it that the wicked is surpassing you know me you know how are they doing better than me is the question he questioning God and you know the Lord always trying to get us to understand that it might look like they surpassing you okay yeah because you might see like you might make thirty thousand dollars a year or something. Mm -hmm. Somebody else make two fifty. Mm -hmm. You assume they surpassing you based on money. Mm -hmm. You count numbers. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at the fact that they might die before you. Mm -hmm. You don't know the corrupt stuff behind closed doors that might be going on. Yeah. You don't know if they have Christ in their heart. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they honor God like you do so you assume that you the righteous and the wicked is doing better than you well just like you said yesterday but the scripture that said that the man said show me your faith mm -hmm. without your works right. and I'm going to show you mine by my works right. so you got all these wicked people I believe that is faithful in what they're doing mm -hmm. and we as Christians, mm -hmm. we're we're not like yeah, but, but sometimes people base money, they base things on as a level of favor with God though. Right. They still base. If I got a lot of stuff going on, I'm basing my favor with God based on the things I have versus the things that you have. Mm -hmm. I'm basing my my level of relationship with God on the things of the world. And that's what he's saying, what the Lord trying to get you to see, is that you're basing your righteousness and their wickedness on things that you possess. Mm -hmm. That's what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at them and you're saying, well, how is the wicked surpassing me? Mm -hmm. You're basing, they surpassing you on the things that they have. Right. So you're saying they're more, they're doing better than you, but you're using things to justify it. Cause that's the only thing you could be doing. You could be looking at something that they have but to justify true. that they're doing better than you. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at materials and things of the world, talking to God in a conversation with God about the wicked doing better than you, and you basing it off of things that they have. Mm -hmm. How would you? But like I said, once you you renew your mind, because mm -hmm. we're supposed to be in the world but not of the world. Yeah, not saying that the Lord not gonna give you things. Yeah, but you can't say that. They doing better than you based on the things that you see, the evidence that you see that seen. Mm -hmm. What about the evidence that's not seen? But what about simply life? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Life that's everlasting. What the, well, that's what God's response going to be back to the person that mm -hmm. asks him them questions. Right. Because he's telling you that they always going to look like they swift. They might be swift, mm -hmm. but they might be ended up going into the dungeon. But he said they are, they are, they are in results. Right. They are in results mm -hmm. of, like a drug dealer, mm -hmm. you're in results of. Mm -hmm. You got money, you're doing good, and somebody might look at them and say, well, they're doing way better than me, and I'm righteous. But the Lord said, yeah, but they are in results. Mm -hmm. Do you want their end results? Okay, let me give you the same money, let me give you the same stuff they got, and you take the same result. Then you wouldn't want it. You won't want the wealth that they have then it once you see the end result. Right. So that's what the Lord com conversation is going to be back with you. Okay, do you want their end results too, though? Right. And once you see that, right. you're going to be like, no, I don't want. And you will realize then that, no, I don't want what they have. Right. You just said that the other day. Yeah. You was like, um, people going to see this person and they ain't going to want to be him. Right. They ain't gonna want people to know that they know him. Right. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> that we was just Something talking like about. That. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we'll uh, get to just that. a reminder, faith is the <laughs> substance of things hoped for, uh -huh. the evidence of things not seen. And they need to the hope to the kingdom. Hope for the kingdom. Hope for the the, the kingdom of God now. Put your hope in that. Jesus. Everything else gonna fail. <sighs> the house gonna fail. He said, "Look at this building." He said, "Yeah, no stone gonna be left one upon another." Right. Okay, how pretty <sighs> it look right now. But anyway, that's where we're at right now. Anyway, glory be to the Almighty. Bless the Lord God.
Pastor, I tell you, it's a lesson in everything. Yeah. It's, the gift of God. <laughs> it's a lesson in everything. Bless the Lord God. Okay, let's go over to Luke. But it's still a lot more in that. Them verses need to go back through 6 and 7, but we ain't got to do that now. But it's still a lot there what he's talking about. You want to look at it? You can look at it real quick because, like I said, it's good for people to have, like I said, I'll go to church all the time. And it's good for a person to stay and do a New Testament, Old Testament reading. But they never get into breaking that stuff down, looking at it, deciphering, okay, what did we just read? You know, how do we get this in us? You know, we've read it now. How do we get it imputed in us? Because people can read these scriptures and 20 minutes later, they don't remember nothing about them because you did not explain them. Or you didn't break it down. You don't get nothing out of it, you know, no more than just read through it, you know. Mm -hmm. That's why sometimes I was with Reverend Pearson. We could go, it would take us like over an hour just to go through five verses. Right. Well, I go to other churches, they'll read 20, 30 verses mm -hmm. in like two minutes. Right. It take us two, three hours just to go through five verses. Right. So. And no understanding. You don't, you don't know what you're reading. You don't get it. I bless the Lord for, for giving us a teaching ministry. It's a gift from God. I bless the Lord for that. Um, this is Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation. He which did what? Bitter and hasty nation. How do you get where they are? What he saying? How do you get where they are? He said he raised them up. Raised, yeah, raised up. <laughs> he raised them up. Mm -hmm. Just like the Egyptians, he raised them up. Right. Just like Russia could be a better nation. He said, how did he get there? I raised them up. Right. Why do he do that, though? Mm -hmm. He raised up another nation so nobody don't conquer the world. Right. The U.S. cannot conquer the world mm -hmm. because of another nation. Right. That's why all the stuff going on right now. That's why the United States always trying to get allies in all these different places. Mm -hmm. Because they know they cannot compare to Russia. Mm -hmm. So in order to be, to fight a bully, just like in school, in order to fight a bully, I need partners. Right. And that's what we don't want to have. You don't want someone to try to take over the world. Like Russia is like, actually right now, is in the uh, position to take over the world. Mm -hmm. if, if not take over the world, but destroy it. Mm -hmm. He can destroy it. But, and the United States could too, but they also saying some of these other smaller countries that just got nuclear weapons, just for them to go into a conflict could set everybody back years though. Right. Even if the U.S. shoot no, no nuclear, Russia shoot no, just out of, like India they was talking about last night, just India and Pakistan, mm -hmm. they could set everybody in the darkness. Right. Just them two countries, they only got a few nuclear weapons. So read that again real quick, please. Habakkuk chapter 1, this is verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, uh -huh. which shall march through the breadth of the land. He said they were what now? They were bitter. Bitter and hasty. And hasty. That mean when they come for you, they don't care about your money. You got a Ferrari? Okay, don't care about that. We'll step on it. We'll blow that mess up. We don't care about that stuff y'all got in the United States, what they saying. Mm -hmm. You don't care about the stuff that you care about. Your 401k, your house, your $300,000 house. They don't care about that crap. Mm -hmm. That's no, trash the to them. That's trash to them. Don't care about that stuff you care about. Read it again, please. Verse 6. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land. And he also told you what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to stop and he's telling you what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And more. Yeah. To possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Right. To take over. Mm -hmm. That's why I try to tell people, leave Russia alone. Mm -hmm. Leave this stuff alone. Y'all trying to do, try to make all those stuff y'all putting on CNN and Fox and all those kind of stuff. That's when we went last, we read about Israel. The guy said, the king said, is there a man of God that we can inquire of? Should we go in this war or not? Mm -hmm. Not my prophets that I have. Find me a man of God. Let him tell us whether we're going to make it through this war or not. Yeah. That's what they're always looking for. But they ain't looking for that today. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep telling them on these videos, 
don't go. Leave these folks alone. Stop talking about you're going to kill a president. Stop. Keep your mouth shut. Stop talking about this stuff. You need to stop putting that stuff on the news. Mm -hmm. So people can get stirred up in different countries talking about, go fight Russia. Right. Ain't send no troops over there to fight no Russia. You can't go and put no army on no, no, uh, they used to like come in and put the troops on the land, like they invade the land, mm -hmm. come off the water. You can't do that now. They blow the whole, they'll blow the whole area up. Mm -hmm. They kill 100,000 soldiers in one bomb. Right. You can't go with no infantry and tell me you're going to put some boats on it. That's why Russia's trying to push it back. Because mm -hmm. if he know if he had to nuke something, he don't want to nuke it on his border. He want to push it back. So if he had to nuke the people coming in, he want to nuke them not on his border. That's why he's trying to do a pushback. That's why the United States go get allies. Because they want to keep that mess away from the country. But they don't want to have to nuke something on their own land. They don't want that. That's why he's trying to push it back. I was just thinking about what you just said about like the ships that come up and get on the land and right. then like they go to battle like if these countries these days see like a fleet coming towards them right they can destroy them in the water yeah you never might not ever make it to the land well anyway. that's what we're going to talk about today wow just thinking before yeah, you look. even get to the battle you can't you ain't not gonna make it there that's why they saying these folks talking crazy they getting the news media to hype the people up in the U.S. to try to get them to convince the U.S. to go to war against Russia. But the U.S. saying, you're a fool. <laughs> We're not going to put U.S. soldiers against Russian soldiers. We're not going to do that because it's going to easily wipe the people out. <laughs> and all of them going to be in bonkers. And the scriptures already said they're going to be in bonkers. They're going to be in the bonkers when Christ comes. So something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. We don't know what, but we do know what. We do know what's going to happen. I'm telling them what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm telling them getting the right way with God. Something's going to happen. Right. It's already said one third of man going to die. Something's going to happen. Right. Don't keep instigating. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 7. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Uh -huh. Keep going, one more. Mm -hmm. their, verse 8. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards, and are more fierce than the evening wolves. And their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle that hasted to eat. He's just telling you how powerful they are and how unstoppable. They are unstoppable. Mm. And he ain't saying he's going to stop them until the end. Mm. <laughs> Scripture's not saying the Lord's not going to stop these people until the end. Mm. And he's letting that happen based on your unrighteousness. Right. If you're in an unrighteous nation, he ain't letting this stuff happen. He letting stuff take place. Right. New Testament Scripture. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Oh. All is well. All is well. Wow. All right. New Testament reading. I'm in Luke chapter 9. <sighs> Lord God. Luke chapter 9. And I wanted to start at verse. I wanted to start at verse 18. Luke chapter 9, verse 18. Verse 18. And it came to pass that he, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? Verse 19. They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias. And others say, that one of the old prophets is risen again. Verse 20, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. Verse 21, And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. 
Verse 22, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Verse 23, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him de deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Verse 25, For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Verse 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and, it, and in his fathers and of, and of the holy angels. Verse 27, But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Bless the Lord God. Bless the Lord God. That was again. verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Yeah, I'm going back over this because there's so many Christians today that's ashamed to put out the word of Christ. They know the word, mm -hmm. but they are ashamed of the aftermath mm -hmm. of them saying certain things or afraid of consequences mm -hmm. that might happen if they certain, say certain things. That's why the Lord said, if any man come after me, let him first deny himself. It's hard for people to do that. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say you're going to deny yourself and say and talk about Christ. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say that in a church setting mm -hmm. or among people, what we call warm market. Mm -hmm. But would you go out in the street and say that to like the police, mm -hmm. the senators, mm -hmm. the governors, the president? Mm -hmm. You know, would you say that to those people mm -hmm. in fear of being arrested like Peter? Peter told Christ, he said, well, I will not deny you. But when he got in front of folks that could arrest him, mm -hmm. it changed. Right. So that's what the Lord is saying here. He said, what now? Verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me mm -hmm. and of my words. And of my word, he said, if you're ashamed to say my word. Mm -hmm. And this thing can fall on folks. Like I said, we get ready to go through tribulation, great tribulation. A great fear going to come upon the people. Fear of being arrested. Mm -hmm. You're not going to speak about Christ. Also, Pastor, I've been in the military 29 years. I'm a retiree. Okay. <laughs> but after 29 years, what I've come to notice is that a soldier will be more willing to say, I'm a homosexual, mm -hmm. I'm a lesbian before another soldier would say, I'm a Christian. Right. And it's like, it's just like weird because even, you know, those type of things, like I don't want to get kicked out of my clique. Right. I don't want to lose my friends. Right. I don't want people to think different about me. So right. I just stay quiet about being who I am. Being about Christ, you're, about, yeah. you, you're ashamed of me and my word, what Christ is saying. You don't see it, but it'll probably take somebody like somebody else that's a prophet or a servant of Christ. They'll come upon you and they'll be like, hey, is you ashamed of Christ? They'll be like, no, nah, why you say that? That's because I just heard these folks like the Sands, you say somebody, they were homosexual. You didn't tell them who you were. Mm -hmm. right. I don't ask, was you ashamed to tell them that you was Christ? Mm -hmm. And I had to ask them that question. And then they had to give me an answer. Mm -hmm. But because now they're in company with me, somebody that's Christ-like, They'll conversate with me and said, no, I wasn't ashamed. I'm like, okay, we'll go back and tell them then that you're a Christian. 
and they will think twice about going back and telling them. So you actually got so many people today. That's why we got this ministry here to hopefully that it will wake folks up. That they can actually see themselves. You can easily <laughs> forsake the Lord. Yeah. All is well. All is well. I was just reminded of, of, a, of my own personal experience when I was deployed. Like I had, I had a friend who was my friend sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. uh, he was my friend sometimes, but when it came to like the other people that was against me, it was like, now if I want to hang out with, with Sergeant Stith, who I was then, if I want to hang out with her, I got to do it like on the DL because I can't right. let these people know that that I, that we are brothers and sisters in right. Christ. Right. You know, I can't let them know that. So, you know. Uh, yeah, and the more, the more stuff I see on YouTube, the, you know, stuff that folks talk about Christians, they call us Christian dumb or something they be saying or something. Mm -hmm. And my response back to them is, I'm a Christian, 1,000%. Mm -hmm. That's who I am. I am a Christian. What's your comment? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just straight up with them. I'm a Christian. Yeah, and even my first sergeant, like she told, she straight out told me that, that she couldn't be hanging with me all the time. Because, yeah, yeah, but you might say stuff she can't say. Because, yeah, because of the people, like, because, like, well, it was like, this was like my worst experience. I think I might have told it in a previous video. But this is like the worst year of my life being on deployment and I wasn't in danger from the enemy. I was in danger from my fellow soldiers, right. you know, so it's like I was an outcast and like everybody had to choose carefully how they associated with me, mm -hmm. knowing that they already was associated with me. Right. But now you got to be more cautious about, you know, how you interact with me. And I just, I thank the Lord that he walked me through that time. Whew, that was the time. Lord. Bless swear. the Lord. I'll just wait. All right, Pastor, let us pray. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord God. Thank him. I praise the Lord God. For he has kept me. He has kept us. He is keeping me and keeping us. And we are thankful for the Lord God that he has again brought us here into this place. He gives us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He gives us awesome fellowship. And he's given us a successful Bible conference on yesterday. And he's brought us back today. And he's doing things in our family and our lives. And he's continuing to be the Lord of all. And we thank the Lord on this, this day, and we ask him that he would just continue to stay with us. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy. And thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to, what else you're going to give us, because you've already given us a, a lot already, Lord God. So we are looking forward to seeing what else, Lord, you have for us on this day, during this service, Lord God. In Jesus' name, also, Lord God, we ask that you would bless the pastor, let him decrease. So that you may get the increase in him, speak through his mouth and think through his mind. Lord God, we bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. And we say amen. Bless amen. the Lord God. Praise him. Pastor John.
the people that came out yesterday, blessed mm -hmm. be the most had God. Bless the Lord. And um, I'm still on fire for Christ. Bless him. <laughs> even based on what everything that's going on right now. <laughs> Bless the Lord. All right, now, okay, we can you can see. So we, um, I don't know where it started, really. Um, let's see. I know we're supposed to be doing Genesis 16. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't been there, and I don't know when. We don't left Genesis, but I kind of kind of figured that it was already in my spirit that we were gonna be there because something was gonna happen. <laughs> right. I knew something was gonna happen when we went down there. You know, it'll you know, bring us right back to Revelation, it'll bring us right, and I already knew it was gonna happen anyway. Mm -hmm. But I said, let's go and try and see how far we can get it. <laughs> yeah. I knew we weren't gonna make it though, but anyway. All right, so um I'm still studying uh, the wars, the past wars. Um, and um, today, I'm going to just give y'all some information mm -hmm. that you can go look at yourself. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why. Um, now, they might not tell you all this. So I'm saying you gotta, you gotta study your own stuff. You gotta research. You gotta research stuff for yourself. Because mm -hmm. like we were saying, um, Russia got this line right here with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They try to push this line back. Mm -hmm. So there is an invasion now. Like I said, in, in other wars, old wars, when you want to uh, invade a beach, you go out and you invade the beach, you take over the beach, and then you move forward into the land. Mm -hmm. Doing that now, let's say if you go over here and you want to invade uh, the beach, like China or something, right? Mm -hmm. You want to invade the beach. You put 100,000 troops on that beach line, it's a it's probably a, a ninety percent chance they might just drop a nuclear bomb on that on that beach, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They're not even gonna send their soldiers out. Right. They don't send no soldiers out. We're gonna send your soldier out to fight soldier for soldier. Mm -hmm. Where you doing that damn twenty twenty? Mm -hmm. They might just drop a nuclear bomb on that beach mm -hmm. and kill everybody there. That's what we're dealing with today. So, I was watching this stuff last night, and they was talking about uh, Russia, the capabilities that they had. Now, we also know the U.S. got a lot of capabilities, Canada, you know, Taiwan, China, Egypt, uh, Pakistan, India, Turkey, you know, a whole bunch of places. Mm -hmm. But they was more concerned with Russia because they're not, you know, they're not talking about the capabilities that Russia have. So I'm gonna give it to you today, mm -hmm. right? So and you can go and look these up. They was talking about, you know, you heard about the B two one bomber that we have here in the United States that can deliver what nuclear weapons, right? Mm -hmm. But Russia has this thing called, it's a, uh, and I took some notes on these so I can remember what they were. It's called a TU-160 Blackjack. And you go look it up for yourself. And they claim it's a plane like the B-2 bomber that's almost like you can't stop it or something. Mm -hmm. So they load a nuclear weapon on that plane to drop on anybody. It's almost like you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about like how they have like, Russia have like when they put their submarines in the water. They got three people on that sub. They don't have to call back to Russia. They got nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. When they go in the water with their sub, 
they don't have to call back to deploy those weapons. Mm -hmm. There's three people on that submarine that makes that decision. Mm -hmm. They don't make no phone calls. Mm -hmm. If they find themselves in trouble, guess what? Mm -hmm. Three people gonna make it a choice whether they're gonna blow you up or not. Mm -hmm. And what happens if they do that? Chaos. Lives lost. Okay. Retaliation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then what's going to happen? More destruction. It ain't going to end. Mm -hmm. Like I'm saying, what I'm seeing now, just messing around with these folks, like I said, to me, if, if I was president, I bet the news media shut their mouth about it. I won't let them say nothing else about it. I won't put that mess on the news. I'll be trying to calm down tensions with Russia. Fans. I saw Biden on the, the TV the other day. They said, call President Putin. They said, call Putin. He said, I ain't calling Putin. I'm like, what? They're like, call the man, get the tensions down. You're trying to, y'all trying to raise tensions. Mm -hmm. Talking about you gonna equip Ukraine with weapons to fight Russia. I'm trying to see what else they had here. So oh, they said, hey, this new missile that travels. Now, this is what the U.S. was saying. Now. They had this new missile that travels 20 times. You know, a long time ago, they used to try to break the sound barrier, right? Mm -hmm. That's one time. Now they tried to do it two times. They said those missiles breaks the sand barrier 20 times. That's how fast it is. Mm. So they say it that it's unstoppable once they fire. It's unstoppable. It travels 20 times the speed of sand. Unstoppable. Mm. I'm trying to see what did they say the name of it was. What is it again? Um, it was a missile, I think it's called uh, Anon Guard or something. Then it had something called the Paisen or something. It's A N E N G A R D. I think that's what it was. Let's Then it has something called uh, the Satan Two. Hmm. Some called the Satan Two missile. I don't know if y'all can look those up, but that's just for people that watch our video, so they can see what's be going on. But a lot of times people don't tell everything, and they said they used to have these war games with China, and when China saw the stuff that they had. So they were having war games with China. China and Russia was having the war games. And they would say they were pretty much demonstrating it for China, just so China would know not to try to mess with Russia. Mm -hmm. And they that close, you see what I'm saying? So they that close, but they was having war games just to show China the stuff they had so China wouldn't even attempt to mess with them. <laughs> Like, uh, let me see what else I got here. So they were saying China, once China saw that, they wouldn't mess with Russia. And they said that's why you see a China trying to do what? Getting on board with Russia. Join with Russia. Mm -hmm. And then they said, well, somebody else was joining with Russia. Venezuela, mm. something like that, mm. right here. And then it was talking about this Cuba 
missile crisis or something that they had not, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. The stuff right where? Mm -hmm. hmm? in, our, in our neighborhood. <laughs> now also, it was this guy called Dr. Williams J. Perry. And he was talking about how Americans is not afraid as much as they should be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And he lived here, I, I think he's from the U.S., I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he did, he went to one of them, them colleges, them big colleges or something. What's his name again? Um, Dr. William J. Perry. And I went and researched just to make sure I had his name right. Mm -hmm. So he talking about it too. And he's a scientist. And he was saying the American people is not afraid as much as they should be. And I can tell they're not with the stuff they said on TV. I know they're not. They don't know what's going on. Let me show you that all my little stuff here. I will touch them. Yeah, I think they will see it. Just stuff that y'all can go look up yourself. And this will give you an idea why the U.S. said we can't put troops against Russia. But one thing for sure, if you live by the sword, Die by the sword. if you live by your weapons, if you live by nuclear, if you live by the sword, you what? Die by the sword. You won't die bad. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna happen. All right, so we're gonna do a little lesson here today. We're gonna stay longer because I think we about all the time anyway. Uh, let's go real quickly. I'm going to keep y'all along today. Um, let's look at Matthew chapter 24. We're going to get back to Genesis one day. Mm -hmm. And they also say Russia had this other weapon that they fire underwater now. It's a nuclear and it goes like 50 to 100 miles per hour underwater. Mm. That's how fast it is. Mm. And you know something got to be got some power to run that fast underwater. Underwater, yeah. Yes, yeah, so they saying the stuff that Russia got in there, you can't really stop it. So that's why I'm saying they need to get that big speed of stuff. They need to keep them for their mouth shut and try to work that stuff out. Right? Mm -hmm. Stop letting these folks stop trying to instigate the war. Trying to put the U.S. against Russia. That's what I'm saying. I'm not against Russia or the U.S., but I'm against is unrighteousness. That's what we teach here with Christ. Mm -hmm. Our job is to bring all men mm -hmm. under Christ. That's some. Right. All men under Christ to be saved. Mm -hmm. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 24 real quick. Um... Let's do Daniel 7, 11, 27 first. Daniel 11, 27, and a lot of people should be familiar with these scriptures now, because we still going over the same stuff pretty much. Mm -hmm. Daniel 11, 27. Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. And both of these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief, uh -huh. and they shall speak lies at one table. Uh -huh. But it shall not prosper, uh -huh. for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Who said that? The Lord God. The God, Lord said the time of the end going to be when he says it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Even though they could be gathering themselves together to determine. Now, we're not saying that they're not going to kill a lot of people. We're not saying that. Mm -hmm. We just read it how bad how these people moved across the land mm -hmm. and conquer stuff. And I said that people are not going to die because the scriptures do say that one third of mankind going to what? Perish. Going to perish. But this not going to be the end though. Mm -hmm. So, so people going to survive this thing. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Revelations real quick. Revelations uh, chapter 9 verse 15. I think we talked about this before, once before too. Uh, Revelation chapter 9 verse 15. Revelation chapter 9, verse 15. Uh -huh. 
And the four angels were loosed, mm -hmm. which were prepared for an hour, and a day, mm -hmm. and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. So, like we're saying, it still might be people might die, right? But it's not going to be the end. So, what we're trying to do now is make sure that everybody, what? The mark of God is on your forehead. Mm -hmm. Make sure you repent daily. We're in end times now. God's not taking no stuff serious. If you don't want to go to church, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to Bible study, that's your problem. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. The Lord see what he going to do with who he going to do it with. Mm -hmm. He know who serve him and who serve him not. Mm -hmm. He know the difference he's saying. Give me one more of that real quick. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Mm -hmm. And I heard the number of them. Verse 17. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Uh -huh. And out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, by these three was the third part of men killed, mm -hmm. by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, uh -huh. which issue out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, for their power is in their mouth, mm -hmm. and in their tails, and their tails were like unto serpents, mm -hmm. and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Verse 20, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, mm -hmm. yet repented not. Uh -huh. of the works of their hands. Even if we have a war, uh, the Lord is saying, even after all the death, after all the death, people will be still looking to get into some fornication. Mm -hmm. People still, if they make it, if they make it, they can still want what? Homosexuality. Mm -hmm. If they make it. The Lord said, even if they make it, they're not going to what? Repent. Repent. Even if they make it. Matthew chapter 24 real quick. We're going to do a little bit here real quick. We ain't been here in a minute. Matthew chapter 24. Start at verse 1. Yeah, we'll start at verse 1. We got a few minutes. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Uh -huh. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Uh -huh. And his disciples came to him for to shew him the buildings of the uh -huh. temple. Look at this building, Christ. This is a nice place. Talk about how, much, how pretty it looked. The money that folks put in it. What he saying? Verse 2. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Uh huh. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another uh -huh. that shall not be thrown down. Uh -huh. Keep going. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the mm -hmm. disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us, when shall these things be? And when shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign mm -hmm. of thy coming? Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for now. Yeah. We know all this stuff got to happen. I'm not what? I'm not even shaking back. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I'm afraid because I'm afraid for folks mm -hmm. with their mouths talking, saying what they're saying. Right. They don't realize the, the stuff they put themselves in. Mm -hmm. I already know if whatever happened, I'm going on to glory. Absent from the body. It's present with the Lord. It's when you pray, what? Believe. believe. Talked about it in the conference yesterday. Mm -hmm. When you pray, believe. Mm -hmm. I'm going right to glory. <laughs> and just for all the children right now mm -hmm. that I'm seeing trying to, you know, get away from Ukraine, the chaos mm -hmm. that they go up through right now. Mm -hmm. Ain't we thankful all today? We are. Bless the Lord God. Ain't we blessed on today? Yes, we are. 
The Lord said these folks say they still won't enter into the house of worship. Mm. This ain't going to change this though. Mm. This thing going to change. Skin. Blessed and still will not go into the house of worship. Mm. What's that thing what he said about child with, with the children? Woe unto the women that Woe unto you with child. Mm -hmm. I ain't paying us attention to scripture. Mm -hmm. Don't give a hoops, a hoopy hoop. Thankful that you ain't running with your what today? Running with your child. Mm -hmm. Be thankful on today. Praise on today. Praise the Lord. That you're not running with your child. You know you can't get caught the Mexican border now. Mm -hmm. Because your idea what? Put that wall you put a wall out. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are able to flee Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Where y'all going to you know, Where you going in the water? Mm -hmm. Where you going to? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to Cuba. Mm -hmm. Mexico, you got a border wall. Where you flee to? Where do you flee to here? When you here, where you flee to? They don't think about that, do they? Everybody think they're safer than you have, they ain't got nothing to worry about. Go look at Dr. J. William Perry. Mm. Mm. He said, you don't, you, you're, not, you're not afraid of this thing. Let me have this. <clears throat> Verse 3. And, he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, uh -huh. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming uh -huh. and of the end of the world? Uh -huh. Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh -huh. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, uh -huh. saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Uh -huh. Verse 6. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Is that what you got now? Mm -hmm. He said, you hear what? Uh, wars and rumors of wars. Okay, read that again. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Huh? I said, just as I said, I was what? I ain't in trouble bad. Right. <laughs> I know it's going to happen. I know something's going to happen. But I'm not what? Right. Going home and go right to sleep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't in trouble bad. But don't think that I'm not aware of what can happen, though. Right. But I'm not troubled by it. Right. Keep going. Verse 6. <clears throat> and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Uh -huh. For all these things must come to pass. Uh -huh. But the end is not yet. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Verse 7. Verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and king kingdom against kingdom. Uh -huh. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. We had an earthquake not too long ago. Y'all remember that earthquake? Mm. Huh? I think it was one not too long ago that was up in like near Pennsylvania. I thought the washing machine had fell over in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the washing machine had fell over. The whole house was trembling. <laughs> I didn't know it fell an earthquake before. Mm. The whole house was shaking. I thought the house was going to fall apart. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped up like, what in the world? Mm. And the first thing you do is run to the what? To the door. <laughs> right, to the door. <laughs> I run to the door trying to figure out what's going on. What's happening? Uh -huh. And I go look at the white machine, white machine, and I'm like, what happened? <laughs> a big earthquake. I was thinking about the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, first of all, I got to get out of this house. That's the first thing I have to do. You get out of the house. You're supposed to be in the house. You're trying to get out of the house. You run outside and see if the, crack, if the sky cracked. That's something. <laughs> I could have been a nuclear blast or something. I would run out of the house. 
<laughs> I'm going to two class. <laughs> Those days came in the hell, went down the hell. Mm. Oh, I wonder where I know something like that before. Mm. So I imagine if you've been in places that have earthquakes all the time, right. you probably got used to it. Mm. It's killing. Mm -hmm. And just imagine there's a nuclear bomb or something to drop. Mm -hmm. Oh, blow the house off the ground. Kill people for a hundred miles. Instantly. You better hope they don't drop that one in that Virginia Beach water. Mm -hmm. I had a tidal wave come across here. Tell me some fight some Russia. I get that mess off the news. You just think about it. If we did have like a tsunami or something come to the beach, we'll probably have to be able to get as far as West Virginia just to miss it. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to get there. How you going to get there? Take no. three hours and get all that? In three hours. So I don't know how you how you going to do it. You going to make it? Hmm. I did give me a bicycle though. <laughs> <laughs> I won't try to take me a car. <laughs> I don't know if I'll try to take me a car over there. I think you might get about maybe 50 miles and that's going to be it. Mm. You might make it through Blackstone. Mm. Might make it through Chase City Crew or something. Start giving me a farm video. You might, everybody trying to get away, mm. you ain't going nowhere. You might need a dirt bike. <clears throat> you ain't going nowhere. You ain't gonna make it. Better be covered by the blood, that's all I can tell you. That's all, that's all you can do. Better be covered by the blood. Okay, where we at? <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24, verse 8. Uh huh. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh huh. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, uh -huh. and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. I don't like them Christian folks. Mm -hmm. What he's saying. Kick on. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Uh -huh. And shall hate one another. We got that going on right now? Mm -hmm. Hate folks. Right. Because they ain't got a mask on. Mm -hmm. Hating folks because they want to take a what? A vaccine shot. Mm -hmm. What did they just say in verse 3? Tell us when would these things be mm -hmm. and what will be the what? The, sign. the signs. Mm -hmm. He's showing you country against country, Democrats against Republicans, mm -hmm. kingdom against kingdom, mm -hmm. people hating each other. Mm -hmm. He's showing them what? The signs of the end of the times. Mm -hmm. These are things that's going to take place. Keep going. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise. Don't worry about what he's saying over there. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what he's preaching. Mm -hmm. How many? He said what? Many. False prophets coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what. Don't worry about what he's talking about. I'm like, okay. But they should be on the same page. Yeah. They should be reading the scriptures mm -hmm. and seeing that what I'm saying and what these scriptures are saying mm -hmm. is true. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. What are you going to do to them? Deceive them. Going to deceive you. Keep going. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love for many shall what? Wax cold. My love for you is cold now. I don't really just don't uh just don't like it no more. Why? I don't know. Just don't like it. Spirit. Spirits. Mm -hmm. Four spirits. Four angels. The horses of a pot of moves in the world. Spirits moving wealth power. power. Mm -hmm. Like he did with the king of Israel. He said, with one angel come up, what the angel said he was going to do? To get in the mouths of all his prophets to be what? A lion spirit. spirit. That's what I'm going to do to you. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. I'm going to do what now? Endure to the end. I'm going to endure 
to the end. What he said in verse 3, I'm going to endure to the end. I'm going to keep what? Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell people that I'm a what? Christian. Because I'm not going to feel some kind of way when I had to tell somebody I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm going to feel real good. Right. I'm going to feel real good that you don't like that I'm a Christian. I'm going to feel real good mm -hmm. that you don't like to hear me say that. I'm going to feel real good. And I'm going to say it again. I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. a follower of Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached uh -huh. in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Uh -huh. And then shall the end come. What we say he's gonna preach what? The gospel. What's gonna be preached? The gospel. Tell us again what's gonna be preached? The dispensation of grace. Yeah. Just stick with the gospel. <laughs> Sometimes people may have changed when I keep saying it. They think I'm not telling them the right thing. They'll change. Just keep saying it. Well, I know. saw what you was doing. Just say the same thing. Just the say gospel. it. Change. The gospel where it shall be the, preached. The gospel shall be preached. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what we were talking about yesterday in the conference. Uh -huh. the between the law, the uh -huh. New Testament, and then the gospel dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. So he talked about the gospel shall be preached. Mm -hmm. But we're going to go back and we're going to look at all three of them again too. About the New Testament. Not the Old Testament. The New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the gospels of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Keep going. We're in Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. Uh -huh. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh -huh. stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Read verse 3 for me again. Bless the Lord. <laughs> verse 3, sir. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, uh -huh. saying, Tell us when shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, if he give you the signs, how can you identify the signs? If you don't study to show thyself approved, rightly divided the word of truth, how are you going to know the signs? Mm -hmm. Read that one again, 15, was it 15? Verse 15. <clears throat> when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh -huh. stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Whosoever readeth, let him understand what he's seeing. So you need what? The Holy Ghost. And we went over this already when we went through Revelation. Just talking about the abomination of desolation. Uh -huh. Who that is. Forget that. Right? Now, I was, I was just thinking that it says... Whoso readeth, uh -huh. in parentheses, let him understand. Right. It's got that written in parentheses. Right. So, stand in the holy place. Right. Is what, what we should understand as yeah. Christians. What you getting out of it? Stand in the holy place. Uh-huh. That's telling me, <clears throat> Psalm said, He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High uh -huh. shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh-huh. Be covered by Christ. Okay. That's what I see. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I see. Is that what it's saying? I don't got none of my notes in front of me right now. <laughs> that we want to we this whole thing up in Revelation. But when you see the abomination of desolation, mm -hmm. we know that abomination was what? When you take things of God and start trying to defile them. Mm -hmm. The desolation was similar to almost the same thing. Mm -hmm. I had to go back and look at these. Like we talked Revelation a minute. Mm -hmm. But it's desolate, like you're making desolation. Like he talked about how the Antichrist going to come and he's going to take down the things of God. Mm -hmm. Or like they might try to make desolate of uh, church worship. Mm -hmm. Like they like they cancel this thing out. Mm -hmm. They make it desolate of it. They mm -hmm. try to like desolate it. Mm -hmm. They don't want 
you to be participating in it or something. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to. I said I was gonna take these things and put them on a chart mm -hmm. so we can easily access them. So we can go back and just look at our definitions and stuff. But we cover so much stuff here. Mm -hmm. So let's keep going. Verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh -huh. Verse 17. Let him which is on the housetop not come, da come down mm -hmm. to take anything out of his house. Read 15 again. Verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, now we also stand, discover that that was what to also? The Antichrist. Christ. Mm -hmm. We also discover that the Antichrist is not just by him what? Himself. He's not by himself. Just like the body of Christ. It's right. the body of, it's of the, Satan. It's the so. body of saints with Christ. Mm -hmm. So Christ has a body. Right. The Antichrist, Satan, also has a body of believers that believe in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So they all Antichrist, mm -hmm. right? Because anybody that don't believe on Christ is, is what? Antichrist. Is Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And I had to, you know, talk to John Hagee about that the other night too. Mm -hmm. Because he said that they was a, he said somebody had said that they was a group. And he was saying that they're not a group, they're a man. Yeah, he is a man, but it's a group that go with the man. Right. So I didn't do, I didn't say man out of the way or nothing, mm -hmm. but I would just let him know he might have to look at that again. Yeah, because Jesus <coughs> himself said that there's already anti-Christ, plural, already, already in the world. There's already gone has already gone, gone for. Right. Yeah. yeah, he was saying there was anti-Christ. Mm-hmm. Right. You were saying there's many mm -hmm. of them. Right. It's not one. Just like the just like the Legion. Right. It Is said it? for we are many. You're many. Mm -hmm. That's why you got that name. Right. Yeah, so you anti Christ, it's a whole lot of you. Mm-hmm. And you got a what? A leader. Right. You with your leader is gonna make what? Desolations mm -hmm. of the things of Christ. Mm -hmm. The Antichrist with his followers gonna make war with the saints. That's gonna make war with the saints. They're gonna make everything that we do desolate. Mm -hmm. And when they make it desolate, they actually gonna cause abominations. They're gonna take what we do as holy. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take the holy things and make abominations out of them. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take the holy things that we do with Christ and make them desolate. Mm -hmm. They're gonna try to cast it off, cast it away. Just remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, and Daniel. You gotta stay on the cry. Endure to the end. Right. Not gonna do it. Not gonna follow it. Mm -hmm. That's why he said, whosoever tries to save his life for what? Lose it. And whosoever lose their life for his sake. Mm -hmm. That's why he said what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that people can get this stuff in their spirits and be able to walk in it. Mm -hmm. What we say? Walk it like a what? Walk it like you're talking. Walk it like you're talking. <laughs> Keep going. Verse 17, let him which is on the housetop not come, that come down to take anything out of his house. Uh -huh. What that mean though? Whoever's on the rooftop, let him not come down. If you have an understanding about Christ, don't come down off of what you know. Mm -hmm and go back and pick up that that you knew before. Mm -hmm. Don't go back. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you got your hand to the plow, mm -hmm. and he said, whoever look back with their hand on the plow is not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, when you have learned something and know how to do it, don't go back trying to change it. Mm -hmm. Just stay where you're at. Like even, even I think about, um I don't know which, I think it was some of the, I don't know if it was just one or more of the disciples uh -huh. that he told to go and don't carry a name with them. Right. That he was going to send them to where wherever they needed to be. So he's saying also that he's going to supply you. Right. So keep the faith, you know, and don't look back. 
Right, and you gotta also remember now, I'm trying to tell people when they read their scriptures, you gotta remember Christ said he did not ever speak to these people without speaking to them in a what? Parable. In a parable. Mm -hmm. He said he just didn't talk straight to these folks. Everything is laid out in parables, now you gotta go and study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. Rightly dividing the word of God mm -hmm. and figuring out what he's saying when you're on that rooftop. Don't come off that rooftop. Right. Stay up there. Right. If you up here where you know you're understanding that with Christ, don't come there off of that. Mm -hmm. Just stay there. Right. You're just using us as a parable to let you know where you're at. Mm -hmm. Keep going. <clears throat> Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Uh -huh. Verse 19. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Don't turn <laughs> back and take up your... Possession. Your dirty garments that you had on before. Okay, okay, yeah. Because you had to, you had to rent your clothes. Mm -hmm. Old Testament, they put on South Carolina armor, they rent their clothes, mm -hmm. and they'll put on the new thing. Don't go back and take up your old garments. Mm -hmm. You got on new garments. That's why the Lord said your garments have to be what? White, White. and purified. Mm -hmm. But now it's not just your clothes; it's you mm -hmm. that's being purified to Christ. Right. Keep going. Verse nineteen. And woe unto them that are with child, uh -huh. and to them that give suck in those days. Look what happened in Ukraine right now. Mm -hmm. If that happened here, the Lord said what? Woe mm -hmm. unto you that are with child. Because what he's saying is what? It's going to be difficult for you to do what? Get away. Flee. Yeah, it's yeah. just be difficult for you to flee, that's all. Mm -hmm. If you're having a child, you want to do it in the what? In the right way. Mm -hmm. So you be what? Covered. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be in fornication with a lot of children. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Sorry, folks don't like that, but anyway. It's just a lot. Huh? It's just a lot. What? It's a lot to, to, to think about, to deal with. Mm -hmm. You know, especially, you know, we talk about our emergency bags and right. funds and stuff like that. And if you have to, like, get up and go right away, and if you, you have to move in a hurry, and if you don't have your your life in order, right. you know, that now your kids may be subject mm -hmm. to the wrath of God because of your wrongdoing or whatever. Right, and that's what we've been telling people for what? Four years now, the same with the emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Have it at your ex, your, but you can get it right now. Mm -hmm. Over in Russia, mm -hmm. they don't shut down the, uh, all the companies going against Russia, shut down their, their uh, ATM machines, mm -hmm. counseling people, visa cards. Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh? Y'all trying to do all this in Russia? You're doing it to the people. Right. You're destroying the people Listen at the stuff on the news. Come on, say they shut that news off. Mm -hmm. They shut that news off. Because now you're hurting all of the people mm -hmm. trying to hurt Russia. Mm -hmm. And you're not hurting Russia. Okay. Then you come back and say they're going to sanction Russia. They're going to put all these sanctions against Russia. You're not hurting Russia. You're hurting the people. Mm -hmm. But they want you to agree with it because now they're going to what? They're going to raise the inflation up on you. They're going to take the rest of the little money you got saved up. These folks trying to make you think they heard Russia. You ain't heard Russia. You know why? The United States said put sanctions on Russia. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about pull Russia's wine out on news. Mm -hmm. Pull out Russia's wine. Mm -hmm. What well, Russia care? You don't pay for it. And, you hurt yourself. And also, it's our gas prices that went up. Right. Why are the gas prices up? <laughs> It's our gas prices and food prices. Everything is going up for us. Yeah, and you sanction Russia. You talking about you hurt Russia? You not hurt Russia. You hurt your people. Mm -hmm. You trying to make it sound like you doing something? You ain't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Just like that coronavirus, you doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Put a mask on. Put faith on. Amen. Put faith on your face. Mm -hmm. You ain't hurt nobody but yourself. And then they talk about take all these sanctions, pull out Russia's wine, don't buy stuff that's come from Russia. And what the United States doing? Buying their what? Oh, every day. Mm -hmm. And I know what you call him on that newsstand. I know he looks stupid. Jake Tabbert, whatever his name is. 
I bet he looked kind of stupid right now. You ever tell me about the sanction, Russia, sanction, Russia, sanction, Russia? And then he come back the other day and said, talking to somebody, well, ain't that hypocrisy or something? Y'all telling everybody the sanction Russia and the United States still bad their oil? Hmm. You telling everybody else to pull their wine out and don't bad from Russia and don't do this and don't do that, and the United States still bad their oil? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to destroy all your stuff. Why <laughs> 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 these folk can't see nothing? <laughs> They want you to destroy all your stuff, and the United States still bad the oil. Tell me they can't stop bad the oil. This is why you fuel in the machine. Did you try to destroy it? Right. <laughs> well, you fuel in the machine that you try to destroy. How is that possible? Wow. Ridiculous. That's like going take your car and say you gonna blow your engine up in your car. You let the oil plug out, but you stand up by the engine door oil in it. <laughs> <laughs> you pour the plug on the bottom, and then go back with a big gallon can, pour oil in the engine while it's running out the bottom. <laughs> and it's supposed to make sense to these folks. It makes sense to these folks, too. It makes sense to them. I'm like, okay, it makes sense to them. Uh, we got one more. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 24, verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, uh -huh. neither on the Sabbath day. Why? Because those times when it's what? Hard to travel. Mm -hmm. When he was saying that back then, they was under what? They were still under the what? The law. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday, they did not do what? Work. They didn't do nothing. So he said, pray that this do not happen on the what? Saturday. On the Sabbath day. Or in the what? Winter. The winter. Pray that these things don't happen. They said, tell us the sign. Okay, I'm going to give you the sign. Then pray it don't happen to you. If you have anything of my father acts in what? My name. name. Any questions on that? I think we got it here right here. Mm. Well, we're going to come back and we're going to finish this out. Um, hopefully, nothing else going to happen by the time we get back here. Mm. But who knows? But if it happened, guess what? Yeah. Keep come the on. faith. Of Jesus Christ. Let's keep your faith. That's all. Don't worry about it. Endure to the end. Endure to the end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Glory be to Almighty God. Amen. All, all right. right. Thank you. All right. Amen.